we will talk about uh, secularism today now if you are hindu and or a muslim or any faith now you have gone to usa where christian fundamental uh, fundamentalism is very powerful now suppose that despite being a us citizen no one is willing to give you house on rent how will you feel you are being discriminated on the basis of religion what you don't want this kind of treatment you can retaliate you will feel bad you will feel low so these religious practices and beliefs when you are discriminated against these this statement rest on the assumption that all forms of dominated or domination relation with the religion or related with the religion should end so this is the essence of secularism history gives us a uh, various stories examples that there are discrimination exclusion and persecution on the basis of religion you might have heard about hitler hitler from germany he killed millions of jews millions of jews but now these same jews in the israel state they are doing the somewhat same thing with the muslim and christian minorities in their area if you go to saudi arabia that the non muslims they are not allowed to build temple or church they can't even gather in a public place of prayers so in these examples the members of one religious community they either persecute or they they are discriminate against members of other religious communities so the act of discrimination takes place where where one religion is given official recognition by the state on the expense or at the expense of other religion so no one would want this uh, discrimination okay so in india we have different citizens we cannot discriminate the citizens against the faith they have or on the grounds of their religion so we have talked about indian constitution providing us fundamental rights so we are discussing what is secularism now so the fundamental rights that is with the protection against the state power as well as the tyranny of the majority the indian constitution allow also allows individual a freedom to live by their religious beliefs practice as they interpret these means they can interpret also in different way so all these keeping in mind this idea of religious freedom for all india has adopted the strategy of separating the power of religion and power of state so secularism refers to this separation of religion from the state so you have indian state you have religion so religion can be hindu hindu basically sanatan dharma and islam and judaism christianity there are so many but indian state it is thought that the separation there has to be clear separation between the state that is the government and the the indian state or anything which is uh, called the part of a machinery of state it has to be kept away from the religion so why it is important to separate the religion from the state what can happen here is see i'll just give you in a example then you'll understand we have say a majority say in india majority is uh, most uh, the hindu dharm hindu following population the minorities are uh, muslims the christians the buddhists etc now this can happen that always this the state if it is promoting certain religion or the majority are having one religion they will always try there is always a possibility that these religious minorities are you can say they are stopped 
they are discriminated they are marginalized on the basis of religion and these they get all the powers also and they get all the uh, benefits also so this is very important to separate the religion from the state the other reason is that this from the state in demo, uh, democratic societies we also need to protect the freedom of individual to exit from their religion embrace another religion or have the freedom to interpret so if someone wants to change their religion someone wants to adopt some other religion or someone wants to interpret the religion in their own terms this is also possible for example i, I will give you an idea that untouchability was there okay now if the people from this community only they might not have thought that untouchability is bad or the sati pratha is bad raja ramon rai he was a uh, he was following hindu dharma but he he thought that this is not the good one this is not the good thing this is actually the disbelief so they can interpret also in their own way they can have a resistance from their own fellow members but the state says that the interpretation of hinduism or interpretation of uh, the their own religion is allowed so why is Indi or what is indian secularism see the indian constitution mandates the indian state to be secular what it means according to the constitution only a secular state can realize its objective in order to ensure certain things first that one religious community do, does not dominate another then though that the some member do not dominate other members of the same religious community and the state does not enforce any particular religion not take away the religious freedom of individuals that is see first one religious community say it's a majority community and there is a smaller community the the religious community does not dominate this one then there can be one more, one community inside this community so some members do not dominate the other members of the same these are minority that means the minority in the majority that they are following the same belief but the members do do, do not dominate the other members of the same religious community and state cannot say that follow this religion state cannot say does not follow do not follow this religion so there are certain things how indian state works because there can be domination so first is i'll give you one by one first is that distance state distance itself from religion that means the indian state is not ruled by a religious group nor does it support any religion so government spaces like the law courts like like the police station like these government schools they are not supposed or the offices government offices they are not supposed to display or promote any one religion so one day what happened this is a government high school this is a proper government school so some student said that we are having uh, next month we have uh, some big religious festival let us celebrate it but the teacher said no this is a government school everyone comes here you can go to your house because religious religion is your personal belief then you can just go and celebrate but we will not allow or this is not good to to do this at in the school because this is a government school but see government school cannot they cannot do anything which support or promote any religion or display any religion religion but the private school are they can they can follow any religion they can uh, say they can allow any religion or some prayers also can go on so this rules does not apply to private school but in government school they cannot promote any one religion either in their morning prayers or through religious celebration so first was that total separation or what we learned was the first was strategy of distancing itself from religion but the second one is the second way in which indian secularism works is to prevent these uh, dominations through a strategy of non interference so second is non interference this means that 
in order to respect the sentiments of all religions and not interfere in with the religious practices the state makes certain exemptions for particular religious communities like we have a person you know he is wearing helmet but the singh or the sikh the person is sikh and in his belief in his religion the pagri or turban is central to sikh religious practice so the government has given leverage an exception of the law that if you are sick then it is not necessary for you to wear helmet so this is the second thing government is doing the third thing in indian secularism is how it works to prevent the domination listed earlier you know by the strategy of intervention so you will just say that this is contradiction one time one time you are saying that government is keeping distance from religion and other other time you are saying that the government will intervene also i'll give you an example untouchability was there so the member of the same religion that is the upper caste hindu they dominate the uh, untouchability was there and the uh, caste system was there so the lower caste were facing discrimination now the state has to intervene if state is not intervening or it doesn't intervene then this untouchability would have been right now also because it is this this kind of discrimination is violating the fundamental rights of lower caste who are actually the citizens citizens of our of our country only so this is how law ensures a law ensures that you know the equality has to be maintained so the religion based personal laws of community the state may have may have to intervene here then also support can be given by the government for example certain religious com communities can set up their own school colleges uh, it can give some financial aid to them or on non -preferential, preferential basis so we will talk about how our indian secularism is different from democratic uh, the united states say, some other democratic country like united states here we have an example that there is in us in the morning government schools they this in this uh, they recite the pledge of allegiance and in this there is a word called under under god but it was established uh, more than 60 years ago that the government school students they are no, not required to recite the pledge if it conflicts with their religious belief that means they are not forced to say under god they are exempted so this is how it goes in us but if uh, in our country there is something going on then uh, government can see and the other people like the civil society can also see that if it is going going wrong or it is just biased towards one religion then it can be changed so there is there are certain uh, you know objectives are similar that uh, the in the secular democratic countries the government has to be separate and the religion has to be separate the first amendment of us constitution prohibits the legislature from making laws respecting an of uh, respecting an establishment of religion or prohibiting the free exercise of religion so what does it means establishment is that legislature cannot declare any religion as the official religion of the country and they are not giving any preference to one religion so in usa the sep the separation between state and religious religion means th that neither the state nor the religion can interfere in the matters of one another so let me tell you again that in us the state and religion religion cannot interfere in state state can not interfere in religion but in indian secularism it differs because indian state the uh, differs from the dominant understanding of secularism which is practiced in us why because there is a strict uh, separation between religion and state in Amer america but in india the state can interfere in the religion religious affair so in india state and religion so state can interfere in the religion so indian constitution if we say we have already abolished the untouchability that is how the constitution intervened the the government intervened the state intervened and this is how we got rid of the uh, 
untouchability, sati pratha, there are so many things which, which are better now. So Indian state is secular, works in different ways to prevent the religious domination. The Indian constitution guarantees the fundamental right that are based on these secular principles also. But still there are certain things going on, violations are there. But uh, you know, we need to tell people, we need to make the, uh, we must understand that if we are majority, like if you are a majority, like if you are, are a elder brother and you have a younger brother, now it is your responsibility to take care of the younger brother. If he is facing any problem, you will understand him, you will try to help him. But if this younger, you, you, you on the basis of say you are elder, that is you are in majority and the younger in minority or following some other thoughts or faith, then you cannot just discriminate or marginalize or you do something uh, unjust, unjustified to him. So this is always the responsibility of the majority to take care of the minority and this is the uh, crux of the secularism. I will just give an example. In uh, February 2004, what happened? France passed a law banning students from wearing any conspicu uh, conspicuous religious or pol political sign or symbols like the Islamic headscarf, the Jewish skull cup or the Christian crosses. But uh, there were a there were lot of resistance of, from the immigrants because they have come from Algeria, Tunisia, Morocco. That were Those were the colonies of France, France only. So the France actually witnessed a labor scarcity. So sometimes because these were the labors only, Algeria, Tunisia, Morocco, they come to France to work. But because they were not allowed to follow their beliefs, they just went away or they, did, they don't come to, the Fra to France. Only few people would come. So the labor crisis was there. So sometimes you make law and you end up with certain problems. So this is all about secularism. Thank you so much. Take care of yourself.